I'll let you know when it's spoilers and when it's no spoilers. Calm. You, you're used to that, Captis. And direct your answers to one. Just, okay, calm. Alright, ready? Yeah, let's do it. Rolling sounds. What was the question again? Can you tell us <laughs> yes. your name, yes. your character's name, and a little bit about your character at the moment? My name is Kieran Jenkins, uh, and I play the Guardian Doctor. So, as a gist, uh, the gist of it basically is that um, the Doctor has lost both Bell and Barry. Uh, it's quite sad. Um, not only is he dealing with that, he's still not quite over the trauma of what happened to Dorothy at the end of Icarus Falls. Um, and he finds himself sort of picking up the pieces of this shattered family and these shattered mysteries and clues that he set up for himself in the beginning of Guardian. Um, this is like a person that was very used to manipulating situations and creating his own games for him to solve, do you know what I mean? So he doesn't really have that anymore. There's no one in the room to tell him he looks clever or anything like that. This is my doctor's last hurrah um, and he doesn't really care in his mind whether he lives through it or not. He just wants to come out of it dead or alive having made the world a better place. And what location are you most looking forward to visiting? Winspit. Definitely Winspit. Uh, I'm a, contrary to popular belief, I'm a big nature lover. I like, I like rural walks and things and like big uh, natural kind of uh, structures and stuff. So Winspit's going to be challenging, cold, early, but the one I'm looking forward to the most. How long has it been since I last played him? I don't remember. Four years? Four years? Yeah. We has it been four no years? Way. We, been, we shot, when did we shoot Black Star? 2016? We shot Black Facade the end of my first term at DSL. That's 20, 20, we shot Black Facade 2017. So it's been just, oh, just under three years. Keep that in. Because like we've been doing, we've been doing DDK and stuff and by proxy, Doctor Who as a whole for about six now, about six years. So to round it all off with this and just to get the chance to play him one more time, it's just, it's nice, man. It's, it's, it's a closing chapter for the Doctor's arc and it's a nice closing chapter for Kieran as an actor, which is nice. It is now 2.08. The morning of Windspit, first day of shooting, before the siege of time. And we've got like a three hour drive, a two hour drive ahead of us to Dorset. And I'm going to go and wake up the rest of my house. So Dan's had his first AD problem. Uh, <laughs> what what what's what's happened this morning? Day one. Well, I've I've had my breakfast. That went fine. No yes. problems there, no hitches. There's a slight problem with oh. costume. Oh, is there? Um, in, this, uh, in that there's some costume that isn't here. Oh. <sighs> so that's my first problem to solve. I am very prepared in case we end up going climbing. I've got carabiners attached to carabiners. So no problems there, nobody panic. It's all good. Now let me go figure out this other problem. Here we are, Mr. Jenkins. Here we are, yes. Wind spit quarry. Yeah. That's not, not, that's not the quarry, it's all. What is that? Uh, which is cool. Uh, I mean, I said in the interview, this is the, uh, the shoot I was looking forward to the most, and it has delivered on Matt. Hello. Hello, Dan. <laughs> How are you doing, Reese? Oh, I'd show the, show the people the coast. Oh. Beautiful coastline of <laughs> Dorset. They go, Matt? Yeah, that's not bad. We're getting there. We might have a lunch break soon. Awesome. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. <laughs> you sound a little dance. You sound a little dance. Not to keep warm. No. You're on a different planet dance. Yeah. What planet is this? Gallifrey. Gallifrey dance. Get the Gallifrey dance. That's. Evan's going to be doing this by the end. We get it trending. Hello, Callum. It's the end of a day. Oh. How's your day been? It's been long. Stressful, without a doubt, as film shoots often are. Um, however, I think it's fair to say that we've probably captured some of the best looking stuff uh, that we ever have. Mr. Perry, the man holding the camera, um, did some amazing drone operating and hopefully has got some shots. I forget, hopefully, certainly has got some shots that will set us apart from lots of other fan filmmakers and student films. Yeah. And that's all I've got to say about that before I pass out. <laughs> Callum, bit of behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Oh. <laughs> so I'm Charlotte Tublick and I'm playing Nancy Wilson. And Nancy is a woman from the 1930s. Um, she works in a record shop and time and space and the doctor just sort of stumble on her door and she gets carried away in a bit of the whole journey and discovers space and new worlds and things she never thought existed. So it's the joining of both the normal universe and a parallel dark universe and the chaos that sort of causes and how the Doctor and his friends, companions all have to work together to try and stop them from colliding and taking over each other. And there's all sorts of monsters and baddies that show up on the way. I love the costume. I, I love the 1930s vibes. Um, so I'm quite enjoying that. Not sure how practical it's going to be to run on the skirt, but I think Nancy <laughs> can manage it. She's quite used to that, so... Doctor Who, episode two, Anara gets a coffee. Take one. Um, uh, director, Dan J. Clark. Yeah. Uh, so Dan, we're now approaching... Ah, that's a... <gasps> oh, oh no! Uh, what's... <laughs> What's this first scene? What's, what's happening? Well, basically, we've got some Monzanian prisoners who some are going to be on their knees, can. the opening scene. Um, so they're going to be pushed their knees and basically killed. Um, basically In killed. a brutal, brutal way by Time Lords, because the Time Lords are evil. <laughs> evil, evil people. So we You're shoot... We, 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 I am, I am yeah. evil. So we're shooting just a really happy execution scene. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So it's day two today, um, it's 9am and we have come to a lovely place called Iron Sight which is a paintballing site to do some exciting um, weaponry scenes and combat scenes. I'm playing a very vulnerable young Inara today which is very exciting. Um, she's refugee mode so she's in little, or little blacks. And they're doing a scene at the moment with lots of guards and wonderful people from combat courses from different drama schools. And I've just had my first ever gun training. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. Nice. The engineer! Yeah! Yeah! James, how do you feel being a Cyberman? Normal. <laughs> Looking good, mate. Okay, so we're here with uh, AD, Dan Piri, crew, Hi. and the Cyberman. It's deactivated. We just found it like this. So you can see we're all safe. Do you want to try it? Let's see where we go. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh Christ, I think it's going to come after me. Holy shit. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Camera set. Uh, camera's ready. And action. 
That answers one of my more pressing questions. This is home. I'm sorry, but you were taken from your home a long time ago. Pain, pain. I'm sorry. How's, how's life as a side man? Uh, dark okay. and full of joy. Okay. <laughs> so what kind of cyber man are you then? Uh, I've forgotten the word. Mondasian. Mondasian. God, you look creepy. Where's that creepy smile again? Oh, stop, please, stop, <laughs> stop. No, I can't even. Guardian, C to time, C38, Camera set. Action. Cut. I am Holly Ann Catherine White. I play in Aravalani, and my character is an awesome space vampire. Two different universes, three different doctors, and two me's, <laughs> two different me's, with an additional me that is me when I'm a child. Which is cute and really, really frustrating to the film. I still don't know how they're gonna do that. <laughs> this one is a lot more combat orientated. There's a lot of fighting in this one, which is very exciting. I have three costumes. This one's my favorite one. Um, I like it because it's, well, it's like super ready for combat and stuff and it's, like, it's really comfortable and it looks like she's ready to go and kill someone. Um, and I love, I love the boots, the little red flowers and the boots are so cool. Um, and also, I just thought like, because Anora's kind of on the side of the doctors this time, we've got like the nice little blue representing her relationship with the doctor and the TARDIS, which I thought was quite cool. We've also gone for like a little black vibe on um, <laughs> on the top, because she's actually quite sad in, in this one, she's quite lonely. Um, and then the other two are really cool. One's quite basic and sort of, it's when she's a lot younger, so it's sort of reflecting her, um, innocence i think is the word to use and then the other one is very very intense and i've just had photos taken for that one it's really dark and red vibrant um but yeah this this one's my favorite i love this one but i'm yeah i'm really excited actually i'm excited to bring her back it's it's gonna be really fun Time. Marker. Doctor Guardian, Siege of Time, Slate 3, C21, take 2. Camera set. Camera ready. Background extras. And action. Sonic. Cut. Yeah, Valiant, how are you finding all of this? I am going to rule time, just all of it, the whole kit and caboodle. It, some, people, people, some people think it's a lot, some people think ruling time's a lot, but I can manage it. With a stalwart team, vote for me, president of time, forever. I'll kill you, there you go. Is that good, campaign? Good campaign? I think that was good. That was good. That went pretty well. What's going on over here? Thigh strengthening warm ups. Yes, yeah, so thighs. And for everyone's knowledge, Daniel Peary can't do this. Up. <laughs> Daniel Peary can do it! <laughs> and action. See that movement, that's all right. Do you want me to throw something? Yeah. You join us in scripts, you provide this corner. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, 
We've got two slates so far. We're rolling real fast here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We've got an hour and 20 minutes, two takes. Just oh, Bevan's yeah. promised to leave set. Warren. <laughs> I think I've said that about three times now and I still haven't left. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if nothing else, I'm going to shoot up And action. Dorothy. Run! Hi, actors. It's like, oh, oh but brutal. How are we feeling? That's, that's it's, it's currently 4.25 4. a.m. Uh, time is now no longer a thing that exists to us. However, we're going strong. Yeah. And we're ready to time travel. We're ready to time travel. Time travel? Time tra travel. Guardian Siege of Time, Slate 2, Scene 35 to 37, Take 1. Camera set, and we're ready. And action. Are you alright? You're a traitor. Inara <laughs> <laughs> Vellani, third born daughter of the High Monsanian Priestess, Scourge of Cerberus. I was Reset. that close. What is it? What are you, Holly Ann? I'm a space vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Can you tell us your name, your character's name, and a little bit about your character? My name is Callum Swan. I play the uh, younger Odyssey Doctor. He is a more optimistic, definitely more polite, um, more generally affable interpretation of the Doctor compared to Kieran's um, and he is effectively the representation of classic Doctor Who in um, in our fan series and yeah I just he's a really nice character to play because he is he defaults to being nice to everyone but very 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 quickly um, characters can start to discover that he is by no means someone you should underestimate and that he does have a darker and definitely more confrontational side. Dan and I worked on my costume together over quite a long period of time. Um, I'm really proud of it. Uh, it's basically my, my ideal Doctor costume. It's got, uh, it actually started, the inspiration we started from was Newt Scamander and then taking it from there and adding more Doctor Who elements. So you effectively get this sort of blend of the eighth Doctor and Newt Scamander, I'd say. And that is my favorite look. Um, I really like the sort of, th that it is very clearly quite Edwardian, but um, it's not too, there's not too much going on, it's just practical enough. The Time Lords are back, they want more power. The Guardian Doctor figures directly in their plan to gain more power. They've got help from characters from our continuity, from general Doctor Who continuity, all coming together in one massive crossover of Odyssey and Guardian, uh, all the best characters that we wanted to bring forward um, and it's the the ultimate Doctor Who story that we wanted to tell that that covers all the facets of all the characters and ties it up in a neat little bow at the end. What scene are you most looking forward to filming? Um, fight sequences because you ain't seen Doctor Who like this kids.
Oh, hey, uh, how's it going? How did you find that morning? Oh, it was great fun. It was, it was fantastic. It was good. I got to use the guns, did a little course. Uh, John Wick in space. Great. It was very good. Yeah. All I got called was John Wick in space, which made my heart very happy. So, which also means you've, there's a lot riding on your. Uh, there's a lot riding. Well, you, I mean, we don't know. Maybe space John Wick isn't as good as Earth John Wick. Like that's, <laughs> you know, I've made sure to the one myself. Shot. My name is Luke Rose, and I'm playing the Valiard. He turns up uh, getting a bit of a wibbly wobbly reading, as per usual, and ends up in a universe not his own, a negative universe, which is being created, I believe, by paradoxes created by the Valiard, who uh, is a darker reflection of the Doctor, um, who then creates himself and then goes back in time to continue to create himself, uh, making himself inevitable. He's a homunculi of, of death and destruction, with all the, all the cleverness of the Doctor, with all the evilness that occasionally we get to see. And what location are you most looking forward to visiting? Ironside, hands down. That's where we get to run around with guns. That's my, that's my element. I am buzzing to go back. It's going to be great. It's been a weird, weird road for me in my roles. Um, I've played three, three characters now, yeah, um, in things that have gotten, that have gotten shelved and scrapped and whatnot. So it feels really strange to be doing a version of one and a version of the other kind of meshed together. Um, so that feels... Great, but very. I'm in a very unique position in comparison to most of the cast, but um, I'm relishing it. It's a good time. Hello, we're back again. And then who's gonna have a bike straight? Now do I have your attention? <laughs> the sandwich, sandwich is fantastic. The sandwich is fantastic. What sandwich have you got, Reese? Reese, what sandwich is it? Oh, I've got um, egg and bacon. Oh, that's good though. Permit oh. that. All day breakfast. All day breakfast. Like that's it. classic. Chicken little thing, because... <laughs> Bloody helicopter. So I name him, there's an attachment. <clears throat> it's a snail at the moment. It's crawling towards me, it's so good. <laughs> no. Okay. My name's Reese. Um, I'm playing the Master. Um, the Master's an interesting character because, like, ultimately he's a, megloma he's a megalomaniac. He's hungry for power, but um, I think when approaching this, I need to kind of work out what that power is. Um, and it and it seems to me that his power is to be superior. He wants to be superior to everyone, including his his his, his friend that he had years ago, the Doctor. He always wants one up on the Doctor, and. Um, and I believe that he he doesn't want to kill, I, I believe personally he doesn't want to kill the Doctor, even when he says kill him. He knows that he's going to get away. He's just kind of constantly just kind of like putting the needle in kind of thing. Um, but yeah, he's a very interesting character. Ultimately, the, the, the Time Lords, um, they've conjured up um, a plan to, to control time. It's not good enough that they have it. It's, they want to, fully be in control of it and the master's kind of in on it um, until he kind of gets his power taken away from him as to speak that he doesn't really like that and um, and he kind of basically 
uh, puts two fingers up and pulls the plug um, and, and essentially at the end saves the universe um, whether he does it for the right reasons I don't know but um, ultimately it's, 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 it's uh, people being greedy at the time <laughs> I, I like my costume. Well, I, I selected it um, uh, just from like elements out in charity shops and all that kind of stuff. Um, just wanted to get something that was quite um, just really kind of chilled out for the master. Kind of something that's not going to be like, oh, he's wearing this. This is nice and glitzy. Like just something to not take it away from the character kind of thing. Um, but I like it. It's very hot at the moment, <laughs> but it, it could be worse. But, um, could be in a suit and tie. I could be in a suit and tie, exactly. Um, so yeah, I really like it. It's 9.08am. Uh, I'm, I'm here good. with Callum. And this is how you make Crystal Man. No, um, this is how you pull up a fog machine uh, when the bottle containing the fog juice is still quite full. And um, we're just having a discussion about the fact that this stuff is called fog juice. It's, Actually, I really don't sniff that. it's really cool that Bob that's it's it's ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> this looks like found footage. Does it? Is this like yeah, the Blair, like Blair Witch? The Blair Witch project. Of oh no, I can't scenes. swear. I forgot. Oh wow, well, the swearing in the Icarus behind the scenes. To be fair, and that's already gone out. Oh fair. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> it. Fuck it, yeah, you can swear. Right, on to the first scene of the day. Oh, don't worry. I'll do it just to see the look on his face. The plan must advance. Open the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Beautiful. First position, please. Um, I'm actually chained up, by the way. This isn't fake. <laughs> okay, going for a take. Turn in. Sounds. Mark it. Guardian, the last doctor. Slate five. Scene 31 to 33. Take one. And action. We're too late. No, we're not. Cut! I'm playing Lady President Morbius and she is the president of all the Time Lords. She's very, very powerful and she wants to rule the universe. So she wants even more power than she currently has. Um, but it turns out they create something which is more powerful than they can control. And amongst loads of other stuff happening, to do with negative universes and multiple doctors all coming together and collisions of timelines, then Morbius ends up meeting her own death because she wanted too much. I'm, I'm excited to film the scene where I'm dying because she's so powerful and then suddenly she knows she's gonna die but um, she's still holding on to this being the, the best plan ever and still thinks that there's gonna be a success in it. I hope that I can carry the story on in the way that was intended. Um, yeah, just excited basically. Hi. Hi, what are you doing? I'm hanging out with the TARDIS. 
which I'm so excited about. Oh, lovely. She really enjoys flipping the switches on it. Yeah! To our continuity person, who I'm going to annoy by pressing all the buttons. Okay. Do you know how to fly this thing? Absolutely no idea. Okay. But that's with the character. Fair, I, I understand that. I am meant to know how to fly this thing. I don't quite know how to fly it yet. No, you just I need to. I know this is like, this is like, this does something. Yes. Um, in the last scene, you have moved this dial. Mm -hmm. Will it be moved back? Or? Always, always go to the top. Oh, does the TARDIS just reset itself? Yes. Yeah. It's automatic. Which is why people need to stop fiddling with it. Never! Yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting annoyed at all. Is this like... <laughs> okay. Guardian, the last doctor, slate one, scene 35, take one. Camera set. And action. I'm still me. Oh, that is something. Now you've done it. I would point out it's not actually his fault. No. No, I think this was. Welcome to the back catalogue. The used up lives. We were always here, just underneath your subconscious. Glad you could join us. But that means I'm regenerating. Oh, I certainly hope so. Oh, unless... The transfer was only half complete. I'll turn it into a GIF. Oh yeah, do that. Are you ready? Ready. I'm Alex Zer, uh, and I'm playing a character called the Castellan. Uh, and the Castellan uh, is a uh, Time Lord. Um, he, uh, but he's someone who doesn't um, believe in, in the current state of, of Gallifrey and what's going on and what the Time Lords are doing. So he's someone who very much is an idealist. Um, he's an individualist as well. He sort of fights for what he believes in, as opposed to what might be right or wrong doesn't concern him as much. Um, yeah, a bit of a rogue bit of a rebel, he sort of tends to shoot first, ask questions later kind of vibe. Um, yeah, all around cool guy. There's a nice yeah. big combat scene that I'm in. A lot of shooting, a lot of action hero, John Wick stuff. Um, so I'd say that, yeah. Oh, I love it. Honestly, I'm in love with this costume. This is the first day I've tried it on and it is the best. I feel like, I just feel very noir. Do you know what I mean? The big trench coat, the the tie, you know, all black. It's it's sweet, yeah. I had a gun for a little bit as well to do some like promotional stuff and it was just it was a great time. Yeah. How do you feel about taking over this character from your predecessor? Um, I'm excited for it. It's really cool. I think just like challenging wise as an actor, it's cool that I've got to come into a role and be able to watch slash listen to what he's already done with it, you know, and kind of see how I can take that, and because the character's now regenerated, that you can, I don't have to stick super, super specifically to what he's done, but the core concepts and concepts, the core I don't know, elements of the character are still there, but I can kind of play around with it. So it's nice, I've got a very strong foundation influence there, and I can kind of do a bit of my own thing with it as well. Welcome to the shop. From everyone ready. Lovely. Yes. We're going to shoot very yeah. quickly, so I need you guys in costume. <laughs> Who made you in So much for the BTS. <laughs> so much for the BTS. <laughs> in terms of your edit, where it'll be wide shot, OTS shot yeah. of I something. Just, I just think as we're filming that way anyway, we might as well have extras in and then we can just tell them to get lost, basically. Okay, if you want to. Okay. You can have yeah. It's going to eat into that time because yeah. you can edit what you need and then. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's those socks. <laughs> it, fun fact, if you look out, I basically for every day, I wore a different pair of socks. For me, for my own Easter egg. But if you spot it, good for you. Today I'm wearing the, the record shops because we're going into a record shop. 
record shop socks. It's so clever of you. I'm amazingly smart. <laughs> Basically, there is a part where I'm knocking on cue in there uh, to give the main cast member her cue to come out or do her thing. They didn't need me for this particular one, so the director's just gone, I'll, I'll step in, I'll take this. And instead of actually knocking me, there he is now. <laughs> Uh, that guy in white, Dan Clark, has just done this. And credit to Charlotte for not cracking up at this because we were losing it, but it just went. Knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. No, 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 no. <laughs> Three or four times. I forgot I was going to leave myself. <laughs> What do you do at some point in your career? You appear in a really bad film and get a massive award. I, I don't get yeah. Give me a Razzie. Let's go on. In fact, the people of Razzie, <laughs> people of Razzie, watch Gravestone, rate it, then give me a Razzie. What you'd have to submit Gravestone to the Razzies? Fam, I think it prime material for a Razzie. Prime. Yeah. It's bad! Let's not kill ourselves anymore. We were 16. Like, it was shite. Of course it was shite. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you wanting to know a little bit about how I work, um, I start by putting all of, uh, writing down all of my musical ideas in this programme, which is called Sibelius, which makes things sound really tinny and rubbish like this. Um, but it's a really useful uh, way to store all the information. Um, and once I've got it all written down, um, I then convert it to a MIDI file and open it up in this uh, software called Logic, um, which allows me to make it sound like this. <laughs> So if you were wondering what um, the credits music looks like written down on a, a piece of uh, sheet music, then that's what it looks like. As you can see, Kieran's beautiful face is on screen right now. I'm actually partway through composing that big forest battle sequence in the middle of the final episode. And at this moment in time... The Doctor has just survived his face off with the Valyard. And he's got his, um, a moment to himself for once. But I still want to capture that sense of um, anything could happen and the threat is still there. So I'm going to introduce that rolling bass line. Where the hell have you been? Hello. Uh, my name's Callum Swan. You've already seen me once in this documentary uh, talking about sort of acting and things like that. Hi, my name's Dan Clark. I am one of the writers and directors of Doctor Who Guardian 2020. And well, first of all, we should probably address the elephant in the room. Uh, the last time you saw me in this documentary, uh, I was being filmed well over a year ago now um, in August 2019. It's now December 2020. We've gone through post-production and a global pandemic uh, since then. But we got the story finished, we got it edited, we got it done. Um, and yeah, just want to talk a little bit about the writing process uh, and how we decided that we were going to sort of finish it in the way we did. So we finally decided it was now about time to bring Doctor Who Guardian back. Obviously, last time we saw it, we ended with the Black Facade, um, which was never intended to be uh, where the series ended. The real life reason that we didn't continue with the series at the time was because uh, Kieran, who plays the Doctor, the Guardian Doctor, he went away to uh, Drama Studio London. So what we did was we put it on hold and it was that sort of time that Callum contacted myself and Kieran about uh, Doctor Who Odyssey. That went into production and was finished and was the whole story was concluded with Icarus Falls, uh, at which point we knew we were pretty much done with Doctor Who and we were ready to sort of move on and become filmmakers in our own right. But we had to finish the story we started in Guardian, otherwise, you know, what was the point? So we came back to it. We had the remaining episodes of the series planned, but we felt we could do something better at that point. 
and then we had the idea of writing one big finale, one episode that would bring together all these concepts and ideas that have been kicking around in not only Guardian but now Odyssey as well. There was many iterations of um, the story. Uh, Callum and I worked quite closely together over a number of months during sort of the post-production period on Icarus. The most consistent idea was that we wanted this to be a Valiard origin story um, using uh, obviously the character that we saw um, in a Guardian in Broken Memories and uh, a few times uh, during the series. Um, who was played by Luke Rose, and we wanted him to be Valiard. The scripts that we were writing to act as the sort of concluding story for our Doctor Who, allowing us to move on completely, was originally going to be a sort of one hour uh, special finale that was sort of both Odyssey and Guardian. But eventually we decided that probably wasn't the right way to go around it. So the end decision was made that we would raise the existing episode count of Doctor Who Guardian from four, finishing with the Black Facade, up to six finishing with The Last Doctor. The Siege of Time was then created as a sort of bridge to drag the story from original Guardian into Guardian 2020 and up the stakes ready for the big finale at the end. It was at this point also that the characters of Inara and Morbius were brought in uh, to flesh out the story a bit more uh, and it just meant that it could act as a complete continuation of not only the original series of Guardian with Inara but also the story that had been brewing on Gallifrey and was uh, addressed in Icarus. Bringing in the Time Lords was another important element for me. We show them a lot more ruthless. Uh, we show what happened if there was a really, really evil president of Gallifrey that would use all the resources of the Time Lords to wreak havoc on the universe, basically. Dan then made the brilliant suggestion of bringing in Nancy, a fresh companion character for the duration of this story that would mean that if it had to, the Siege of Time would act as a jumping on point for any potential new viewers. Nancy, for me, I really like the character because there's a lot of parallels between herself and Dorothy from Odyssey. And because obviously from where we are, uh, the Guardian Doctor got his memories back and um, he obviously knew about Dorothy. So I wanted there to be sort of a hint of a relationship that they would have that would be similar to what he had with Dorothy. Um, and spoilers, if you haven't seen uh, The Last Doctor, go and watch it. Um, obviously with Nancy dying, it parallels uh, what happened to Dorothy and Icarus as well. Um, so that was always something that was very important to me, um, that we get right, basically. All throughout this writing process, we were looking to raise our game. Uh, Icarus had been a massive step up from previous Doctor Who fan films that we've been able to put together. Uh, and this had to be as good, if not better than that, but with arguably a more ambitious story, more fight sequences, more complicated use of monsters, and a bigger cast. It was also important to me that we did honour the people that had watched Guardian. Um, so I didn't want it to be, right, we're doing the Siege of Time and the Last Doctrine, you're never going to find out what happened to Barry, you're never going to find out what happened to Belle. So obviously we did various different fact files that would kind of explain what had happened and also uh, the minisodes that would tie everything from Odyssey to uh, the Lonely Doctor's era to the Guardian Doctor's era. So it's all a neat little timeline of um, all of the events that had happened during that time. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it was a proper conclusion. And there were a few ways of doing this, all of which revolved around basically what we did with Kieran's Doctor. We did briefly debate killing the Doctor outrightly, having this be a supposed sort of end to the Doctor's story, but that kind of felt uh, dishonest, maybe a little bit of a betrayal of the show. The other option that we had um, was that the Doctor could uh, waltz off back to the TARDIS, same old life. Um, but again, it would probably for us provide the wrong message because it didn't feel like a completion of the story. We also didn't want to have him regenerate and then another Doctor walk away because again, it would feel like there was more to come. What we ended up with was an ambiguous ending where the Doctor is thought to be dead by all the characters who know him in the story. But in reality, there is a slim chance that the TARDIS returning to him in the Panopticon Vaults may trigger a regeneration. We felt that was sort of the best way for all our audience members to see what they want in the ending and for the story to pick up into whatever they decide it could possibly be in the future. We were incredibly lucky um, to have got away with not filming in 2020. I have to admit, um, I said to Callum, uh, oh, maybe we can do one part uh, in 2019, summer of 2019, um, and the other part in the summer of 2020. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm glad he, I didn't um, follow through that uh, one with Callum because uh, had we done that, then we would be in a very different situation now. Obviously, the way we did it, it was incredible because obviously we, we weren't affected by COVID. Um, we were able to film the episode back in 2019 and use the majority of 2020 and probably we were able to put more time into editing and post-production um, in 2020. And that's it really. There's not a lot else to say other than a huge thank you from myself and Dan, not only to everyone who was involved with the project, but to all the people who showed up as the episodes went live and subsequently to give Doctor Who Guardian a really great send off. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has supported DDK, uh, uh, because without, without you, um, projects like this wouldn't and couldn't happen. I really mean it when I say that projects like this wouldn't be able to happen. Um, so thank you. I really mean it from you know the bottom of my heart. Thank you for supporting us um, over the years. And you know I really hope that you enjoy the stuff that we will be doing in the future. Um, so please subscribe. Keep keep watch on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Um, and you know there'll be plenty more to come. As for what the future holds, who knows? But there's not a lot else we can say other than thank you for joining us on our adventures in time and space. We couldn't have done it without you.